White balance. So why do I have to learn it? White balance is vital to your overall image. When looking to capture beautiful images, the last thing you want to do is have poor white balance. In order for your camera to distinguish what is true white in your scene, you must be able to properly white balance your camera. To do this, you'll have to be familiar with color temperatures and how they work. In order to understand color temperatures, you have to understand the measurement of light, which is calculated in Kelvin. When capturing images on your DSLR, you only have so much wiggle room in post to color grade. If you don't get this properly in the initial setup, your colors are gonna be shifted and you're gonna have weird color shifts from green, red, blue, and it's not gonna look good, it's gonna be amateur. Let's take a look at ways in which you can set your proper white balance so you have the right colors and right hues and you're perfectly set up for post-production. What we're gonna do right now is talk about white balance and how you can get accurate colors within your image when you first record um, instead of manipulating and fixing them in post because like I said previously, it is very important when recording that you set your white balance properly or at least very close. You're gonna be starting out on the wrong foot. You're gonna be using footage that is very washed out and it's really hard to recover especially when utilizing dslrs or cameras that don't sh that don't allow you to manipulate your color as much in post you know it's not like we're shooting on an re right now we're shooting on a camera that is limited and you have to maximize your camera in order to be able to shoot professionally with it and so what we're going to do right now is kind of analyze what we got going on in the shot Right now we're recording, we're gonna, have, we're gonna have to stop it a couple times and then restart it because the camera doesn't allow us to uh, start shooting and change the settings at the same time. Um, so right now we have a Rubik's Cube represented on the table and we've also got uh, just an old lens which has a little bit of green on there, red and white and black. And I just wanna be able to get accurate colors uh, within white balance settings. Um, for this shot, as you can tell, it's very blue. The colors aren't showing up very well on the Rubik's Cube. And that's because our white balance is set incorrectly. So what we're gonna do is basically take the image like this and turn it more into something like this using a custom white balance and just going through the Kelvin settings, which we'll talk about right now. Let's stop the recording for right now and let's go into our um, white balance settings. There's a little WB right here. All I gotta do is hit that button and right now we're in the Kelvin settings, but we're gonna go to the beginning. Already right now, if you go to the auto white balance, it does a pretty good job. Um, it's able to calculate the light within the camera and you know tell the camera, hey, this is white and these are the colors that should be represented. This isn't bad. This, is a, this could actually work very well for you in most scenarios. However, you're gonna have issues when you're moving the camera around um, you know, the camera may have a little mind of its own and it may actually shift colors while recording, which you do not want. And that's represented right here in the um, auto white balance right here, that AWB. Um, the next one is daylight. So if you're filming in daylight, which this scene is pretty accurate to daylight, it's a little bit different um, because we have mixed lighting right now. Um, but daylight is pretty much where we want to be. As you can tell, the shot's pretty good now. If you were to bring that in a post, this would be a very good image. Now, cloudy is gonna be a little bit different when you have an overcast. It's gonna be a little more blue um, heading into nighttime. So that color temperature will be different. Um, it's anywhere from past 5600 and just heading in, heading in the blue, that's, that's the representation. Um, but because our shot is 5600, um, around 5,000, because our shot is around 5,000 5, Kelvin, and if you were to tell your camera that it's supposed to be 7,000, that's why we're gonna get more orange in there. It's gonna look a little more tungsten. So there are ways to manipulate the camera. When you are familiar with all of these, um, when you're familiar with white balance and how um, Kelvin works, you can really manipulate your shot. You can make daytime look like night just, just by utilizing different lights. Um, you know, you could film during the daytime and make it look like night, or you could film at night and it looks like day. It's all about 
um, manipulating the camera. It's just a big magic trick. Um, you've also have other settings here as well. Um, you have your tungsten settings. So right now this is telling the camera, hey, this shot is tungsten, which is 3200 Kelvin or less. And that's why it's being represented as blue. If this was tungsten, this would be accurate. It would look, you would see the colors being represented properly, but now, right now they're represented poorly. It's blue because it thinks it, it's, it, it's blue right now because it is telling the camera that, hey, this is orange. So when it tells it it's orange, it brings all those colors all the way up, which is represented wrong. Now these little tickers here are custom white balance settings. There's four of them. They kind of look like a flower. What we're gonna do is show you how to get a custom white balance. Is hit up and get a white sheet of paper or a white card. You should be using a white card that you can get from Amazon, which is um, a more accurate representation. It's very important um, to not have the camera too far away because then it's gonna be setting the white balance to where that camera is and where you take the photo. So you want to take the photo pretty close to where your subject or your talent or whatever it is you're filming. Right now we're pretty close, so it's fine. So I just took a photo of that and it says completed. And now it is stored. So we go to your white balance. And number one is the custom white balance right here. And that is what it looks like. This is a very accurate um, white balance, much better than our um, first setup where it's very blue. Um, and this is one thing that's gonna distinguish you as a more professional, more serious filmmaker. Um, there are always issues. Um, you know, the, the, the first thing that I notice is that most people will mess up the shutter speed and then it's white balance. I mean, when you're when you're going into post production, even though you're going to fix it up, if you set your white balance, you know, very poorly and you don't understand it, you're going to have a lot of issues trying to recover your image. If you want to get in and out again, tap just tap the photo button halfway. That helps you a lot or display button or menu. Right now, if I film here again at this location and I have the same lighting setup, all I have to do is go to this first ticker and press enter and that's gonna set my white balance properly. And this is a good way to kind of speed up filmmaking if you're doing a show and if you know this is my setup and these are the lights that are gonna be here. This is such a very important tool. Now, if you move over to the Kelvin, as you can see, it's going to be represented from 2,500 Kelvin to um, 10,000, I believe. And what that's telling the camera is um, it, it's, it's a very accurate way to um, set your white balance. I oftentimes use it. I go to Kelvin and depending on the room I'm in, um, you know, I kind of look around at the lights depending on the project, right? But for a lot of uh, small corporate shoots or YouTube, Instagram stuff, I, if I'm filming outside, I will go over to the Kelvin, I will hit up, and I will go to 5600, which is not gonna be like our custom setting, but it's gonna be pretty accurate. And this is what it looks like. So that's a pretty good photo, much better than our blue. Um, it's very important to practice and understand different lights and kind of get to know the Kelvin of them. It may sound nerdy a, a little bit of work but what you're doing is matching color temperatures which is represented in kelvin and you're telling your camera like hey this is that color and another important note to think about is this rubik's cube that we're filming that is our subject so um you know the kelvin the color temperature on the background i know that's going to be 5600 for sure because those are the lights but the light that we're using to light this camera is not a um, daylight. It's it's a little more cut back. It's a little more like 4800. So we're gonna have those mixed color temperatures. And yeah, that's pretty much it for that.